Hello and greetings to everyone joining us for the latest webinar of the Cannabis Trade Association's professional webinar series. In today's session, we're thrilled to explore topics specifically tailored for those in the UK and the European cannabis industry. Our series is designed to not only educate and inform, but also to build a supportive community committed to ethically advancing and innovating within our field. Now, it's time for me to introduce our distinguished guest, Sita Schubert of the European Medicinal Cannabis Association, who is here to give us some insights into the German perspective. We're delighted to have you with us and anticipate that today's webinar will be enriching and motivational for all. So thank you for the kind invitation. I'm uh, happy to be here. And uh, if anybody has a question, so please just flag and uh, feel free to interrupt. I'm happy to answer it directly. So um, the European Medicinal Cannabis Association, I'm the general secretary of it. And uh, just you know, to, to make you know that we are located in Brussels and we are not only an association for industry, but also for patient doctors and um, industry. And we are there to inform international governments, institutions, agencies, and companies on the situation. So I would start with Germany and uh, we'll give you some insights on the recent changes in 23. And in order uh, to make that, I have to maybe state that we have the access to medicinal cannabis in Germany since 2017. You might be all aware of that. Uh, we had an evaluation of the BFAR monitoring uh, survey, in, uh, which has been published in 22. This is really important because this has been the basis of a very important decision this year, which is uh, coming from our health technology assessment body, which is the GBA. You might heard of it because this is the body who is deciding on, um, on the assessment and pricing of uh, new um, active ingredients and also, of course, of the existing market. This happened in March 23. Then we had the introduction of the EU monograph for cannabis floss. I think it's also important as a step in the harmonization on the quality of cannabis in, um, in the European community. Then we had an yeah, a very hardly the fighted and discussed introduction of the new legislation from our health minister on medical cannabis and recreational use. And um, the one major step, which shall be a, a kind of anti-bureaucratic measure, uh, cannabis shall be excluded from the narcotic list and controlled substance. So that um, doctors would not need um, a con controlled substance uh, prescription and the same would apply to pharmacists. Then the new two-pillar model for recreational legalization has been introduced, which I come uh, back to later. We, the reading of, this, of the new legislation on medicinal cannabis and recreational should have uh, started in November 23, where there was a major resistance even in the, uh, um, internally of the coalition parties and uh, the planned enforcement, um, which uh, started, uh, was supposed to be in January 24, is now delayed to April 24 because, um, yeah, there were there are still some issues on the legislation um, process, which um, the, um, the, the parties are not sure if this is properly done. So maybe uh, to give you uh, previously a first uh, a kind of impression where we are now in Germany. I have, I'm showing you the latest uh, prescription data, which has been just published in October. And here you can see that um, we have about uh, 197,000 prescriptions at present from January to June 23. This is the data of six months. Um, the total costs for, for the health insurance are beyond 102 millions. And um, to, to the, this is divided a little bit in cannabis flowers, 45 million extract and uh, registered pharmaceuticals, which you see is a minority of 26 million. So this data is only, of course, statutory healthcare data and the private health insurance data uh, is uh, not something you can read out here. So the history of cannabis in Germany started in 27, as I mentioned. So we were in March, 2017, we has been introduced uh, the Act on Amendment of Narcotic Drugs and Other Regulations, a very, very, busy name, which at the end was just the introduction of cannabis on a prescription and reimbursement. 
And this was uh, based on a Supreme Court decision, decision by a patient who won against um, the bee farm and uh, requested um, cannabis products due to his severe illness and um, as unmet medical needs, he wanted also to have reimbursement, which has been denied. Um, in, the, in this kind of uh, Supreme Court decision, he won and he was allowed to have own cannabis uh, plants um, as we would have, uh, the government would have lost control on um, um, narcotic. This legislation has been introduced very quickly, uh, we say really overnight and um, has covered also the reimbursement situation to avoid further claims. Then uh, to just to give you a very short uh, summary where we are since 2017, so all these products can be prescribed. So uh, beside, of course, the marketing authorization products, you have also dronabinol, nabinol flowers and extracts. It is important that they have minimum uh, 0 0.2 THC because otherwise they are not considered as narcotic. And this kind of legislation has been introduced in the narcotic legislation. Um, all doctors can prescribe except dentists and veterinary. The only condition is it must be a severe illness, which means life threatening or permanently impairing the quality of life. Or you have a, this, or as, as a second line, it must be a second line therapy, which means you have to try already other uh, um, treatments without success. Um, it is reimbursed, uh, which means that um, you need an approval by the health insurance for the first time prescription and uh, a rejection is only possible by the health insurance in justified exceptional cases and um, with a very, very short deadline. So if they don't respond um, during three days to, to 10 days, then it is considered as approved and uh, B Farm has prepared a medical uh, survey on that um, yeah, legislation from 27 to 22. Sorry. Um, so here you see the, the major input from this uh, monitoring survey. There, there were about 14 questions. It took them five years. They had a data set of 21,000, which they recognized been, has been only about 17,000. It was voluntary submissions by doctors, anonymous, and uh, the survey had been published 22. Um, I think what is very important is that as it is an unlicensed treatment, we would be never allowed to speak about any kind of indication. What we received with this monitoring is a wonderful donation of possible indications um, doctors have treated with. I just um, made here a, a screenshot of one page, but there are, I think, four or five pages. And we received a nice statistics that the main indication has been pain, about 70%. Spastics, um, anor um, anorexia, and um, nausea. So this is, I think, a very, very nice um, sample uh, if you want to have an overview also on the medical indications and treatments of cannabis in Germany. So, <coughs> sorry, the next um, uh, very important part was the GBA decision. As I told you before, the health technology uh, body made a decision this year in March 23. Um, um, the GBA has been approached by the health insurers who wanted to, yeah, to, to have some austerity measures, wanted to reduce the prescribing doctors, only specialists, etc. What was really great, um, uh, the GBA did not follow all this kind of proposals from the health insurances and uh, confirmed at the end all the um, the most cases, uh, what we had already is a legal situation. So he confirmed uh, the prescriptions. Uh, just um, There was just a, an, an additional a limitation that the choice of prescribing flowers should give an additional reasoning by the doctors. Then still all doctors uh, would be able to prescribe, ex except uh, the dentist and the veterinary. Um, they received because the due to the missing pharmacovigilance data in the survey, they received like a um, monitoring obligation for the first three months after the first prescription, just in order to um, assess if there's uh, pharmacovigilance matters, which has been not identified yet. It is still reimbursed. Uh, the reduction of, uh, of reaction time of the health insurance has been even tightened, and there's no allowance for palliative care patients. This is something which can proceed in the treatment immediately by the doctor. The cannabis legislation, as said before, has been major uh, confirmed by the health technology body and cannabis medication um, has uh, entered the so-called Arzneimittelrichtlinie, which is the reimbursement and treatment uh, guideline in Germany. 
So the consumer and the cannabis and medical uh, cannabis um, um, law has been introduced as drafts uh, by the health minister. He has been severely attacked for that due to the situation um, of uh, youth protection, of criminal legislation, etc. So uh, it was a very, very harsh discussion. Um, nevertheless, um, the health minister, uh, Mr. Lauterbach, um, has the point that until now, the addiction of uh, cannabis has not been managed properly. And so he sees in the legalization a form of control. Um, how this shall look like, um, I will point out in a later stage. Um, I have not put all the legislation issues because it would have been far beyond our um, webinar this time. But if anybody would like to have more details on that, so feel free to contact me for that. An important um, introduction has been also that the next step shall be the exclusion of the Narcotic um, Act. So cannabis would not be considered as a narcotic medication anymore which is some way of legal consequence if you want to legalize and you have the harsh restrictions of narcotic legislation, then this will not work in practice. So this is, um, I think, a part which is pharmacologically not justified, but uh, is following at the end the political uh, path of the traffic light coalition we have in Germany now. So it is considered to be a simplification of dispensing the medicinal cannabis by eliminating um, hurdles, uh, et cetera, and prescriptions. I think this kind of uh, problem is absolutely overrated because every doctor has elderly patient, cancer patients, he's prescribing narcotics. So a narcotic prescription is for him definitely not an issue. The same is for the pharmacist. The handling of narcotics is part of their daily life. So to eliminate that in order to simplify this kind of access of medication, I do not see that this will make a major step for the access of the patient. I think at the end, the um, medical treatment decides if the patient is applicable to cannabis treatment, he will receive it. If the doctor is trained and understand it, and um, it will be not really based if there is a bureaucratic hurdle of uh, cannabis prescription or not. So then it, uh, the two pillar model of legalization has been introduced this year, which uh, was also very troublesome. So um, the, one, uh, the pillar one shall consider cannabis clubs, which means uh, it shall be a non-profit association and allow uh, um, cannabis uh, to grow for their members. Um, it shall be maximum 500 members. The database of this uh, registration shall be ownership of this kind of cannabis clubs. It will be not a national database. It starts from 18 years. Uh, their residency must be in Germany. This is why they want to avoid um, cannabis tourism like uh, we had in the Netherlands. Um, and this is something which shall really be very restricted to a local use. Everybody's only allowed to be a member of one cannabis club. But to be honest, this is not something which uh, I see how this shall be controlled if the ownership of the data is at the cannabis clubs. So um, the how uh, public bodies shall have an insight if uh, members are uh, members of two or three cannabis clubs is something which is not clear yet. The distribution of the harvested cannabis uh, flowers is only permitted to the members. There will be no um, sales to outside of uh, um, outside of these cannabis clubs. Um, the allowance is 25 gram uh, per day and 50 uh, per month. And um, the distribution is only to others under the age of 21 is also limited. So a general ban on advertising on the associations, et cetera, is of course uh, consequently and penalty free private co co uh, in, um, uh, cultivation would include three females flowering, which is of course a significant mass because if you do it properly, you can gain something like 40 to 50 gram per month with such flowers. And this is also per adult in in a living area. So if you have four grown-ups in, in a household, you are allowed to multiply that by the adult people in your household. And this um, kind of evaluation time shall be four years, and then it will be decided if this will be continued or if um, this will be banned. Um, a big situation, of course, question mark to the a penal lawyer and judge, uh, uh, judge associations is that, um, of course, this kind of cannabis clubs, as they are supposed to be non-profit, uh, who will then run such cannabis clubs? Because if you are not allowed to make profit, 
this could be either a subscription model or at the end be part of organized crime. So this is still, of course, also um, yeah, a significant discussion with the um, yeah, with the, with the legal parts in Germany. So the other second pillar shall allow uh, cannabis shops, uh, which uh, shall be, of course, uh, entered by, by adults. And uh, this shall be, of course, uh, have a, a geographical limitation to adult residents and the, um, any kind of edibles shall be evaluated if they would be also allowed to be dispensed or not. Um, yeah, this is, of course, something which uh, will be significantly discussed also on a European level. And this is something what we are waiting, what will be the next step for that. This is just a very, very short uh, introduction. I will not go far to it. I just wanted to draft you how um, difficult it might become to have an approval of the recreational use of cannabis. Because presently, you see, we ha you have the traffic-like coalition between the the socialist green and liberals uh, who are pre presently in favor for the rec uh, recreational use. But as we are federal state, we have a second chamber, which is the federal council, and they have to approve legislation which is affecting the lender, the federal states. If this uh, is this kind of approval will fail, then they, are, they will enter an arbitration committee. And if this will be withdrawn, then the whole uh, proposal would fail. So really in a very short one, and uh, as we are also ex uh, seeing that at present, um, the, also the right wing of the social democrats are not happy with this kind of recreational use. Um, cities like Hamburg, Bremen have already refused, North Rhine-Westphalia as well, Bavaria by itself. So we will see how the situation will be. They have already um, um, yeah, published that they will make an infringement um, claim at the Supreme Court for this kind of uh, legislation. I think a very important step has been made with uh, um, pharmacopoeia for cannabis flaws. So this shall replace national monographies and make it easier for growers to supply recognized quality for products in the European Union. Presently, it is under evaluation. Um, of course, this would make it much, much easier for growers to start uh, and to introduce their products if they have to apply to one kind of quality demand instead of having different national, national requirements. Um, so presently, it is not perfect. The humidity, uh, which is part of this pharmacopoeia, is too high. So we are afraid that there will be some mold issues. And uh, so in, in, in this way reflected also with aflatoxins as a high poisonous uh, part, but um, as it is under evaluation, this might be also maybe modified during the process. I will return as, uh, turn to some uh, frequently asked questions which have been asked in the past, and maybe this is also giving a much more focused answer on some kind of questions which appeared. And I think uh, I would just go through it very quickly. So um, I was asked, uh, what are the most regulatory changes in the German medicinal cannabis uh, with the most impact? I think the biggest impact of this year was the confirmation of the GBA on the existing legislation. So no major changes to the current, current situation is, of course, giving some kind of relief to the, uh, to the market. And everybody is just uh, continuing as it has been started. The EU monograph will be also uh, make it available that the, um, the, the harmonization across will uh, give also growers and uh, companies uh, a much easier way to access as uh, things have been standardized and will not have to make uh, for each country new dossiers. The recent trends in patient access, I think, um, um, and the barriers which still exist, I would say the present market of Germany, which is, uh, I think, about 250 million of statutory health insurance patients and maybe 30-40% private patients additionally, is uh, due to, I think, lack of education of doctors. Um, the cannabis companies are still mm, fighting how to, to, to educate uh, doctors. I think the way they are choosing try to be very modern, but this is maybe not reflected in the daily life of a doctor. So um, it, um, the feedback of doctors is that they are not uh, doing e uh, any kind of app learning in the night of 11 uh, after having a busy day, uh, seeing uh, 70, 80 patients per day. So I think here it might be maybe important to come back to the pharma education route, which means to visit doctors or to approach them at conferences 
with um, symposia and to give more, an, an additional education. The reimbursement refusal of 30% is still existing, but of course, unbelievable low. If we see any kind of um, experimental therapies, you know, we, we barely have such a high rate of approval of 70% by the health insurances. And still, I doubt that this 30% is really a refusal. Sometimes it's simply not a proper application um, to the uh, demanded documents, which the health insurance would like to see. And we see, of course, also that patients consult private prescriptions. Uh, if they fail for reimbursement, they are self-payers. So I think this is maybe something which has to be worked out much uh, in a much better way. Then um, uh, number three, what impact have recent legislative changes had on international investment? I would say this was a really severe one, this kind of uh, discussion on recreational, chances on recreational, I think also mixing up markets, expectations, and definitely maybe an over-expectation on the um, situation. I think this is something which made significant confusion in the markets. Investors pulled back and thought about recreational impact, but the way and how Europe is uh, constructed, and as we have so many countries, well, several countries in the East who even did not approve yet medicinal use. The recreational uh, use in Europe is, I think, still a question mark. And uh, looking also on the Schengen regulation, which is the holy cow of the whole European community, uh, which uh, wording is still the same as of the single convention to have control also on, on medicinal cannabis, is, I think, something which... Um, make it definitely more recommendable to stick to the medicinal market and to invest there and to have a steady and uh, income in the pharmaceutical market uh, instead of um, yeah, moving to the commodity market. Then, of course, uh, cannabis companies with a pharmaceutical devel development, which are already a number of, have lost investment due to this potential in legislation investments of uh, some investors. Uh, but uh, we are confident that they will come back as, of course, the investment is a pharmaceutical, is a really um, important one uh, of any kind of investor's portfolio. Um, what are key challenges and opportunities? I think that uh, medical and pharmaceutical training in prescribers would significantly uh, enlarge and expand the market access for patients. Um, the recreational and negative experience may significantly impact also the medical market, of course. I think these are the things which we have to sort out also during next year in order to secure the medical market and to secure their reimbursement for the patients. The current state of cannabis research in Germany, well, how it will contribute to the global one, I think, well, uh, we all know this, the data of clinical trials, and God we trust, all other have muscular data. I think this will be this, uh, the, the situation also for the um, researchers of proof of concepts which are on the way at present, and this will be definitely an encouragement for countries which are still um, hesitating to introduce medicinal cannabis. We still have to uh, think about that we are talking about an unmet medical need, so it would be always great to have an alternative as uh, we do not have uh, um, for, for uh, so many illnesses at present, and where we see also from a pharmacological perspective, but, but also from an uh, institution like Bay Farm, who see a lot of potential in the cannabis for more than 44 illnesses with an unmet medical need. The next question was how to anticipate German insurance landscape, who will involve uh, about medical treatments. Well, to be honest, the current expenditure of about 200 million is really of minor importance in the context of German healthcare expenditure. During Corona, we had an expenditure of 407, uh, 477 billions. Uh, um, the regular is about 300 billions. So this is not something which is severely shaking the reimbursement situation in Germany. And also consider that the statutory health insurance have an accrual of about more than 30 billions. They are uh, having in their backing and the private even more than 200 billions. So, um, yeah, this is, I think, um, less of, impo of less importance. The legal standpoint, uh, what uh, would be the next step also uh, in the EU policies? Well, I think it's not a, not, a, not a kind of legal one. I think it's more a political one. Do we have the will and do we have the time in all these priorities now with war, with uh, energy crisis, etc., to get that on the on, on the prime table? And I think as uh, long as where we are struggling presently now with uh, severe international problems, it might be difficult. But I think the, 
discussions, what we are having also in association with EMA, with the Herbal Committee, um, and with um, uh, politicians uh, of the parliament is something which I think also people want to bring forward to, to bring their, their uh, medical cannabis on the agenda also of the healthcare situation, I think will definitely improve it. Then um, how, what is at the end our task in that business? I think, well, we are an information source for, for government doctors and other associations. We are supporting uh, significantly also patient associations. I think this is very important because we shall not forget that nearly any kind of change what has been achieved in the different countries came always from patients. It is barely a politician will or a president of governments. At the end, it's uh, in most cases uh, a judicative uh, decision by Supreme Courts, and then the countries has to follow as long as they call themselves Democrats uh, on, the, um, um, on the decision of the Supreme Courts. Um, what would I expect from the introduction of a German recreational market? Well, I think here it is uh, definitely it might be an issue whether the reimbursement will still remain because, of course, as the recreational will come in, doctors might lose control on their patients' use and the prescription they are giving. So um, this is, I think, something which might hamper the prescription also of doctors because they might they, um, they will feel insecure if the treatment plus additional consumption is not bringing uh, any kind of issues. Negative recreational effects can also cause, of course, issues in the healthcare system and hamper the medical access in other EU countries, because in our discussion, we know that uh, they are saying is, oh, if you introduce uh, medicinal cannabis, then the recreational is the next step. Um, and this is something which still makes them very resistant to introduce it. I think this is at the end a high cost for all the patients with unmet medical need which is uh, bringing that back due to the recreational um, ideas. The infringement procedure of EU can be expected. We will see how they will uh, react. Uh, the talks of our government with the EU has not been encouraging. Um, everything what was planned before um, does not appear in the new legislation. So I think here uh, our government did not get an approval. So we will see, and this will lead, of course, to new discussions, less innovations also for patients. So I think uh, I would close here now my uh, presentation. Um, to, to be very, uh, very clear, I think with an aging uh, population, there's not really a longer if we will be, uh, might suffer from a life-threatening illness, but only when. At the end of the day, we will be very grateful if we have alternatives and with the crisis, we learned how important it is to have also domestic supply of medication and all this kind of prevention and restrictions in the prescription are, are not bringing us any further as, except increasing the frustration. And uh, I think it's a very sad one if patients have to go to um, illicit markets in order to get their medications uh, during their payments in social systems as we have it in Europe. So here, I think we have to balance that and promote the situation that um, everybody where the doctor has a decision made for a treatment um, due to an unmet medical need. This is something, the part which we show uh, support and follow up. So I would say thank you for the, for the kind attention of the audience. And if there are any kind of questions, I'm delighted to answer them. Thank you, Sita. That was very informative. and. Um... In God we trust, everyone else brings data. <laughs> Love that. Thank you. As we conclude today's webinar, I want to express my deepest appreciation to Sita Schubert for sharing her profound knowledge and expertise with us. Your input has significantly broadened the knowledge of everyone involved in the UK legal cannabis sector. A big thank you to all our attendees as well. The CTA's dedication to fostering education and collaboration in our industry reaches globally, and we're excited about the webinar series lined up for the future. Please keep an eye out on our website and your email notifications, LinkedIn and social media, for details of our upcoming webinars. Thank you once again for tuning in. See you soon.